morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome. Welcome to our 9 a.m. worship service. Let's just give God some glory on today, amen? Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord, and we are excited that you are here in the place with us on today. We welcome you. Turn to your neighbor and say, I welcome you. It's good to see you. Amen. It's just good to fellowship, amen? Amen, amen. Well, we're going to have an exciting day on today because the word of God is going to go forth. We're going to lift up praises unto the heavenly host. Amen, amen, amen. But before we do that, we are going to go forth in prayer. So if you're able, we ask that you stand on your feet and let's look to the Lord. Amen. Father God, we just come before you today. We say thank you, God. Thank you for waking us up today, Lord God. Father, we just give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you for just meeting us here on today. We thank you already for a word that we received in Sunday school. And so we just come boldly to the throne of grace, understanding that if we are in your will, and as long as we're aligned up, God, you will do answer every prayer request, God, that you will seed us you will see us you will hear us God father we thank you for that on today God father we ask that you would have your way father we ask for souls to be saved like never before God shift minds Lord God change circumstances and situations oh father as the people come to hear a word we just thank you for sending them here to this life-changing station we thank you God for giving a word to our senior pastors so that we can be what we've been and call to be God. Father, we just honor you today. We give your name glory for the shepherds of this house. We thank you for Bishop Lyle Dukes and Pastor Deborah Dukes, God. Oh, we ask that they want without anything, God. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. God, we honor you and bless you on today. We thank you for the new building that's coming, Lord God, that we will occupy it. We stand believing and trusting that that is part of your plan, God, so that we can impact the world greater so that we can do it your work for the kingdom greater God father we thank you we thank you Lord God for healing for setting free and delivering on today God we ask that you would rest rule and abide allow your Shekinah glory to fill this place God oh father we ask that right now you would touch every seat every person on the way God make it easy for them to come in God oh father we thank you and we declare your name name to be great. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen. Let's give God the glory. Amen. Amen. How many know we serve a holy God? Yes? All right. We're going to, you want to clap with us? Come on. Come on. I don't see everybody clapping. Come on. Come on. Yes. We serve a holy God. He's worthy of the glory, the honor, the praise. Amen. Yes. Come on. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. Holy, holy. Holy are you.
tell them good morning, welcome, glad to see you on today. We're glad to have you, amen. We're glad to see you on this morning, amen. Praise God. And we give honor to our awesome senior pastors, Bishop Lyle Dukes, Pastor Deborah Dukes. Come on, we can do better than that. We thank God for our, our amazing visionary leaders. Amen. Praise God. We just thank you. Yeah, amen. Praise God. Again, we welcome you to the Harvest Life Church. You may have your seats on this morning. Amen. There's a beautiful spirit in this place on this morning. Amen. Praise God. We welcome all of our first-time guests, who are those who are with us for the very first time. We call you our special VIPs. We just thank God for you being with us on today. Amen. Our, our ushers have a very special packet they would, they would like to give you. And we invite you to, to join and become a part of this life-changing church, Harvest Life Church. Amen. And we believe that we can do greater together than we can do on ourselves. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Just wave your hands in the air. Amen. Our pastors have a very special guest reception that they would like to come and meet you and welcome you to. Amen. So immediately after this service, we will have a guest reception. Our ushers are going to give you the VIP escort over to the guest reception. Amen. And inside that, that welcome packet there, there's a QR code. If you can pull out your phone and just scan that card, there's a short guest form we ask that you could to complete and we like to connect with you amen in jesus name so again welcome all of our first time guests give them another hand amen we thank god for you being with us here on today amen we are on day eight of our 21 days of consecration amen give god praise for our 21 days of consecration how many of you been blessed by the consecration amen amen god is doing a great work in night night and a passion we are church on fire is that right amen amen, amen. we just thank god Amen. And we've been enjoying our On Fire for God 21-day devotion. Y'all been blessed by the devotional, amen. amen, written by our very own pastors. We thank God for Bishop Lyle Dukes and Pastor Deborah Dukes, that powerful devotion. And we are on Chapter 8, On Fire for God, because I'm going to heaven. How many are glad that you're going to heaven? How many of you know that you're saved, amen? You're glad that you're saved and you're on your way to heaven, amen? So day 8, we're going to read day 8, On Fire for God, because I'm going to heaven. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. John 14, 2 and 3. Amen. And, and it reads, if you, if you don't get everything that you want on this side, just understand it will be, all, it will be worth it on the other side. You should always be on fire because God has given you through the covenant relationship of salvation, a destination and eternal blessing, a place called heaven. Hallelujah. Although we don't tend to think about it in this way, death is the doorway by which God invites us to something far better than anything in this life. Personal fellowship with him in heaven. Heaven is the destination for those who trusted Christ alone as their savior. Just thinking about heaven and our heavenly father, God gives us access. This alone should set new fires in your soul. Charge your spirit with the, with the powerful thoughts of heaven and the hereafter. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Amen. Give God praise for day eight. Amen. Praise. Make sure you go back and read day eight and meditate it on it. Amen. I'm going on fire for God because I'm going to heaven. And you can purchase your copy at the marketplace for just $5. As a reminder, you can visit our website, harvestlife.org, and scroll down to the homepage to download 21 Days of Consecration booklet for details about the consecration. Amen. Praise God. How many enjoyed last Sunday? Last Sunday, our dedication and baptism, it was a powerful day all day long. Even started with Sunday school and just all day long, God was moving in the place. Can I get a witness that God was moving on last Sunday and our dedication, amen? Praise God. So we kicked off our 21-day consecration, amen, in our, baptize, in our baptism service. God moved in a mighty way. Twelve souls were saved and baptized on. Let's Come on, can we give God praise? Can we celebrate? Those souls who came over from the kingdom of darkness to the, the kingdom of light, 
12 souls, amen. So we just thank God even for all of our baptism staff and everybody, and amen, for just, um, again, for our senior pastor just bringing a blessed word, just setting the atmosphere all day long, amen, for a powerful, powerful day, amen. Praise God. Coming up on this Friday, January 27th at 7 p.m., Bishop Dukes will be, singing, will be speaking at the Dale City Christian Church Men's Lock-In. We're the men of God. Mighty men of God, can you make some noise? Amen. Amen. We want to go with Bishop over to Dale City Christian Church. Amen. This is where all men aged 18 and above are invited to be a part of this event. The theme is men fighting the good fight of faith. Men of God, are y'all ready to fight the good fight of faith this year? Amen. They praise God. Dinner will be served at 7 p.m. and the service will follow. Amen. So we know that we're on the 21-day consecration. Amen. But they, they always have put a little something aside for the men of God. Amen. So don't worry. Just, man, just come. They'll, they'll put something aside for us. You can visit harvestlife.org for details. Amen. Praise God. At this time, you can stand to your feet all over the place. We want to welcome the woman of God. Did we enjoy Sunday school on this morning? Sunday school was so powerful on this morning. We thank God for Pastor Deborah, the power of prayer. Amen. We ought to give God praise in this house. Come on, if you love him, give God the glory. Come on, give God the praise and the glory unto him. For this is the day that the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Let's give God praise again for our bishop, Bishop Lyle Duke. Praise God. Amen. We thank God for you and you and you. You may be seated. Wow. Listen, we've been dealing with this 21 day consecration and where we are praying and fasting and you've got to know within your spirit without a shadow of a doubt that God answers prayers and that prayer changes things you've got to know keep on praying keep on believing keep on amen trusting keep on oh, come on we got to pray the Bible says pray without ceasing. That means men should always pray. Because let me tell you what happens in prayer. That when you begin to pray, which is that prayer unto God, God gives us supernatural help. Supernatural help. That what you cannot do on your own, the job you can't get on your own, salvation you cannot get on your own. Amen. Now, whatever it is, he says, I am going to give you Amen. I'm going to make a way for you, a way out of no way. I'm going to open a door for you that you cannot open, that man cannot open. Come on. I'm going to cause things to come down that when you bind things on earth, I'm going to bind them in heaven. Yeah. And when you loose things on earth, I'm going to loose them in heaven. And what prayer does, whatever you believe in God for, what does when you get out from prayer, when you begin to pray and you and Come as on. you get up off of your knees or you or you just walk to another way, what God starts doing, he starts going to the rescue. He starts aligning you. He starts letting things get in your position so that you he can prepare you for the blessing. I can't get nobody to give God praise up in here. As he gets God perfect. As he gets God, amen. As God get you in position. Come on. When you pray. Right. God is aligning everything and getting you in position so that you can handle the blessing, so that you can be prepared to bless God in the blessing, so that you can bring glory to God in the blessing. Amen. Amen. So whatever God bless you with, he wants you to know it's in him that you live and move and have your being. So I don't know about you, but somebody's praying for something this morning. The Bible says, whatsoever things you pray for, whatsoever thing you desire, whatsoever it is, whatsoever things you pray, when you desire, believe that you have it. Believe. Why? Because we serve a supernatural God. Believe. There is no answer that he does not have. Believe. Because he has all power in his hand. Believe, hallelujah, that he is and he is a rewarder that diligently seek him. Whatsoever things that you desire, believe that you receive them and ye shall have them. How many going to get to pray and going to pray, going to go, lift up your prayer life more? Somebody say, glory to God. Glory. I feel an anointing in this place. I feel a breakthrough in this place. I feel a shifting in this place. 
Because when saints of God go to praying, yeah. when saints of God go to praying, mountains can be moved. Come on, somebody. Where there's confusion, God brings peace. So when we pray to God, we're believing and understanding. We're not just saying some words. Come on. We're talking to an almighty God that's higher than any situation, that's higher than my parents are, that's higher than my aunt, higher than my uncle, higher than anybody. Hallelujah. Who has all the answers. Anybody believe in God for something? I just want you to raise your hand if you believe in God for something. Because I feel a prayer right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he will answer. You didn't come here just to come here. God wants to do something in your life. You may put your hands down, but I want you to put that thing on your spirit right now. Glory to God. Oh, bless your name. Hallelujah. Believe that he is. You're praying about a loved one, praying about your children, praying about a situation, praying about that courtroom case, praying about that hospital situation, yeah. praying about that child. In the name of Jesus. How many know there's power in the name? There's deliverance in his name. There's a breakthrough in his name. In the name of Jesus. We stretch our hands out before God. Stretch your hands out and receive it, believe it. We give this situation to you, God. We ask, oh God, did you begin to move right now, God? We pray to the almighty God. We pray to our healer, our deliverer, our way maker. We praise you for what you have already done. But how you have already made a way. How you have already blessed. We praise you, God. Now, Father God, we put this situation in your hand. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I need you to call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. Somebody's body need to be healed. Somebody need to be set free. Somebody yoke need to be destroyed. Some burdens need to be removed. Some marriage is going through a situation. Some family is going through a situation. I need you to call on the name of Jesus. The Jehovah Rapha. Our healer. Come on, our healer. Our way maker. Miracle worker. Call on the name of Jesus. And when you call on the name of Jesus, put your situation there and just say, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, I need you now. I need you to go in my home. I need you to go in my finances. I need you to go in my mind. I need you to go inside me, God. I need you to heal my body. Oh, Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. I need you to stretch out right now. I need you to stretch out right now. And say, Jesus, somebody may need to get on your knees. That's all right. We're going to take just a few more minutes. You may need to get on your knees. That's all right. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we bind the devil on every hand. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Find the devil uh, on every hand in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, uh, you hooked on anything. <laughs> Maybe you bound by an addiction. Maybe you got an addiction going on. Father, I stretch my hand to you. Father, I stretch my hand to you. But there's no other help I know. There's no other help I know. God, I give it to you. God, I give it to you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Somebody needs to stretch out to God and trust and believe him. Trust and believe him. Trust and believe him. In the name of Jesus, we pray for and we rebuke the spirit of cancer, diabetes, 
in the name, somebody needs prayer right now. Amen. In the name, God, it's healing your body. We pray in the Holy Ghost. We pray in the spirit realm. We pray and we touch heaven right now. God is able to do above, exceedingly, above all we can ask or think. Lord, we thank you. Put it there. Say, Jesus, you got to learn to call on him. Just call his name out. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, we almost done, but Jesus. I need you to talk to my son, Jesus. I need you to go to my daughter, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Go in my marriage, Jesus. Lord, fix my heart. Fix my mind. Fix my spirit, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I got something in this 21-day consecration. God, I need you now. I need you, Jesus. Oh, every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me. Oh, bless me. Oh, bless me. Oh, bless me. Jesus. 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 Y'all don't know in the spirit realm. His garment is being touched with your infirmities. He's being touched by the pain that you're feeling from the situation. Oh, Jesus. Have your way, God. Have your way. 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 Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Touch him, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. In the name of Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say we have the victory. See your miracle. See your miracle. See your miracle. In the name of Jesus. And let's stand and give God a victory praise all over this building. Turn to your seats. Give God praise and a, a victory prayer.
Again, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It is in the name of Jesus. That we have the the victory. Oh, and it is the name, in the name <laughs> that precious name of Jesus. Of Jesus. Satan really had to flee. Now tell me, tell me. You got to declare it in your spirit. We have. You got to believe it. We have the v, the victory. Come on, give God praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Let's believe God. Come on. Come on, believers. Come on. Let's celebrate the Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have the victory. Come on. Jesus. Sing it, sing it, sing that it. That precious name of Jesus. Say not will the have to believe. Oh, 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 tell me who can, who can stand before us when we, when we call on. Know who you serve, Lord oh, Jesus. Jesus. I'm talking about a cancer healing God. I'm talking about a cancer healing God, a diabetes healing God, Lord oh, Jesus. Lord oh, Jesus. Jesus. Lord oh, Jesus. We have. Victory. Come on, shout out and give God glory. Come on, celebrate the Lord. Come on, if you, I need some believers in the house that know that God is able, come on, put a praise to tell them thank you. Thank you for my healing. Thank you for my breakthrough. Thank you. Thank for how you open doors. God, I prayed about it, and you already are moving on my behalf. Come on, bless him like you love him. Woo, glory to God. This is a church on fire. Give God a passionate praise in the house today. Amen. We thank the Lord. Amen. As you return back to your seat, give him a walking praise. Come on, let's thank God for this precious vessel. Pastor Deborah Dukes, come on. Give your neighbor a hand one good time right there.
Glory to God. We thank the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. The Lord has met us here this morning. Hallelujah. I feel the fire in the house. Praise God. We thank the Lord for each and every one of you uh, today. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we have come to rejoice and to be glad in it. We thank the Lord for each and every one of you. God is a good God. We're going to ask our ushers to come as we prepare to sow uh, and to invest into, into the kingdom of God. He has been good to us. Amen. How many know prayer works? How many believe prayer changes things? You, you're fasting and praying right now. And there's certain things that you couldn't get unless you fast and pray together. And so God is moving on your, how many believe that God is moving on your behalf? That request you just put in is already coming to pass. Give him a hallelujah shout. Come on. Hey! Thank you, Pastor Deb. Thank you for that. Leading us in worship. We want to sow uh, into the kingdom of God. Every child of God is a tithe giver. Amen. This is our investment. This is our love for God. This is our passion for God to say thank you, God, for you've been good to us and you're, you're doing great things even right now. So as we sow, every child of God is a tither and offering giver and, and also we want to give towards our new worship center. Amen. It's coming to pass. Open your mouth. I need, I need people that are praying and fasting to open up their mouth and say it's coming to pass. Amen. We are thanking God. Amen. In the name of Jesus. We're going to be continuing in the series on this Wednesday night uh, talking about unlimited success. And, and we talked about prayer last Wednesday night. Pastor never picked it up on this morning in Sunday school. But how many know prayer really does move the needle, changes things? It brings results. Amen. So, so we, are, we are just excited about it. This week we're going to be talking about um, speaking life out of your mouth. Praise God. Amen. Talking strong. That's what we're going to be talking about. We're going to be, we're going to be, uh, it's going to change your whole life. So if, if you miss anyone, don't miss this one because you're going to be able to shape your future by the words that you say. And we're going to give you some insight on why it's important and why uh, you have to develop that, uh, that in your, in your life, that spiritual principle in your life. So we are thanking God. So join us on this Wednesday night. Uh, also on Sunday, this Sunday evening, tonight, uh, we have what we call, we used to call Project Occupy Live. I'm changing the name. It's going to be Sunday Evening Live. And 5 p.m., we're going to share some principles with you uh, during our fasting and praying. And we're on day eight right now. Amen. Amen. How many, how many know that eight is the number of renewal? It's the number of new beginnings. And so, amen, how many believe God for a new beginning starting in your spirit, starting in your life, in your house, today? Say today, right now, right now. God is shifting things. As you declare it, open your mouth, say, this is a new beginning for me. All right, half of y'all didn't say it like you mean it. Say, this is a new beginning for me. Now put a hallelujah on it. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Man, so as we give today, praise God, we want to sow as unto the Lord. Uh, tomorrow is, uh, we recognize uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, birthday. And we always reference, you know, he was a man of God and, and, and did a work that was, uh, that helped all of us. And, and, and praise God, amen, gives, gets us in the mindset of service to get out of yourself and to, to do something uh, for, for the kingdom, for the greater good, amen? So, so we, 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 uh, we, uh, we honor that we, uh, we, uh, we lift that up today. Also, uh, we want to make mention, uh, and they mentioned it before, all the men join us for the men's lock-in. I want every man to be with us, amen? I, I'll be, I'm one of the speakers. I think they have four speakers, but I'm one of the four speakers Join us uh, at the men's lock-in. Every man is invited. There's no, no cost to it. Um, but it's just right around the corner at Dell City Christian Center. 
we want you all to be there. Uh, we're going to have a great, great time uh, as, as always uh, in Jesus' name. Listen, as, as you give today, we want to, uh, to trust God. There, there are five ways to give. You can use your Harvest app. How many have, have the download of the Harvest app on your phone? Amen. If you, if you don't have it, go get it. It's free, and you can keep up with us and see what's going on. And amen, we got different notifications that come that uh, give you some uh, information and sometimes insight on some of the things that we're doing. So we want you to download the phone, uh, down, download it on your smartphone uh, from the Google Play and the App Store uh, on your iPhone. So we're, we're, we're looking forward to, to great and powerful things Amen. But you can give through the Harvest app. Also, Givelify. Uh, many of you use that. Use the QR code. Uh, you can text to give. Many people use that feature. And then also, that last one is you can use the envelope. The envelope is in the seat pocket in front of you. If you'd like to use that. Uh, we're, but we're, we're believing God. This year is going to be your year. Open your mouth. Say, this is my best year yet. That's, that's right. That's right. You're going to declare it. We're going to believe it. And we're going to start seeing the manifestation. You will have challenges. You, you're going to have some storms this year. But this is going to be your best year. Amen. Praise God. We thank the Lord. All right. We're going to ask Pastor Deborah. She's coming. And we're going to say our uh, offering pledge together. You can stand on your feet with us uh, as we sow un as unto the Lord. Nobody greater. Nobody greater, nobody greater than how, how many know it's nobody greater than Jesus? He said, said I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I searched high and low. Y'all know that. Nobody greater. Nobody greater, Jesus. Nobody greater than Jesus. Deborah. Amen. If you have your offering in your hand, praise God. We ask you to lift that offering up as unto the Lord and repeat these words. Say, this is my worship unto God. This is my worship unto God. As I give with a cheerful heart. As I give with a cheerful heart. I believe that God will use it. I believe that God will use it. To bless his house. To bless his house. To reach the world. To reach the world. And bring forth a harvest in my life. And bring forth a harvest in my life. Amen. Bow your heads with us. Let's believe God. Eternal God, we thank you and we praise you for this awesome opportunity to be in the house of the Lord right now and to sow into the kingdom of God. We are on fire for you, Lord. We are passionate about your will. We ask, oh God, that you look on this worship that we hold in our hand, this worship that we have in our heart, and accept it in the form that it is given. We ask, oh God, that you bless every tither that's giving and tithing and offering. Oh God, do what you said in the word of God. Open up the windows of heaven and pour them out a blessing that they won't have room enough to receive it all and rebuke the devourer for their sake. Bless these that are sowing into our new worship center and these that are sowing in the other capacities of the church. Bless each gift and each giver today. In Jesus' name, let us say amen, amen. and amen. You may be seated. They're going to pass the baskets through. At this time, we're going to have our video announcements. Let's receive the Harvest Life news by saying amen. are in our 21 days of consecration which will end on Sunday January 29th at 6 a.m. Renew your relationship with God with fasting, daily readings from our newly released devotional On Fire for God, prayer, physical exercise and more. Visit our website at harvestlife.org for details and get ready to experience a new level of victory, breakthrough and transformation. Overcome, prevail, accomplish, prosper, triumph. Through God, you can. Philippians 4.13 says, You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Get equipped and unlock power, anointing, assignment, and your best year yet. 
Don't miss this powerful series with Bishop Lyle Dukes that's designed to springboard you into your victorious purpose in God. Unlimited success. Held on Word Wednesdays, January 11th, 18th, and 25th. For more information, please visit harvestlife.org. At Harvest Life, we're running with the vision to see our new worship center come to pass. Join us on Sunday, January 29th for our Project Occupy worship services at 9 and 11.30 a.m. as we experience powerful worship, an empowering word from Bishop Dukes and Pastor Deborah. Celebrate the progress and kingdom impact of Project Occupy and receive exciting updates regarding the next steps in completing the construction of our new worship facility. Facility. Be in the know anytime and anywhere with the Harvest Life Church app. Get real time updates and important notifications. Never miss a moment. Stay connected to your Harvest Life community with anointed messages, event details, and check ins all from your iPhone, Android, or any smartphone. And manage your giving all safely from your personal profile. Use the QR code or go to the iPhone App Store or Google Play Store to download the Harvest Life app. Get connected today. It is difficult to be successful in life without passion. The On Fire for God devotional is designed to light the spiritual pilot in your soul and take you to new levels in life in Christ Jesus. This devotional by Lyle and Deborah Dukes provides 21 days of heartfelt declarations and scriptures that will challenge you to get on fire for God's plan for your journey. You don't have to settle for what has been. Pick up this devotional and begin to declare what will be. It's the On Fire for God 21-Day Devotional. Pick up your copy for $5 today in the foyer or order online at harvestlife.org. All right, y'all. So, look, we got this new commercial, but we only got two days to roll it out. Okay, cool. Oh, commercial about what? A God Start with Bishop and a Moment with Pastor Deborah. Oh, every Monday and Tuesday. Exactly. Right, 8 a.m. on social media. That's it, that's it. So what do we want the people to know? Man, I know for me, it just sets the tone for my week. Yeah, it teaches me spiritual principles. It helps me live my best life. And they give them good gems, too. Gems, bro. And you know what else? You don't want to just get a good start. Get, get a God start. start. All right, let's get started. Get y'all. a God start with Bishop Dukes on Monday at 8 a.m. and be blessed by a moment with Pastor Deborah Tuesdays at 8 a.m. Are you active or retired military, federal employee, or a current government contractor employee? You can be a change maker with the Harvest Life Church through the 2022 Combined Federal Campaign. The CFC is an organized donation program that allows military and federal employees to make tax deductible gifts to eligible charitable organizations to make a difference in the local community and around the world. Sign up to support Harvest Life Church world missions and local community initiatives through the CFC's international campaign by visiting givecfc.org. Use CFC number 29407 to donate. If you know someone who is active or retired military, federal employee, or a current government contractor employee, share our CFC number and they too can become a change maker. The campaign starts Thursday, September 1st and runs through January 15th, 2023. Please stop by the CFC resource table in the foyer for more information and marketing materials. Calling all first-time guests. Join us in the meeting room immediately after service for a first-time guest reception. Enjoy refreshments, learn about Harvest Life, and meet our pastors. Join us in the meeting room. We'll see you there. That's it for this edition of Harvest Life News. To see details about our upcoming events, visit our website at harvestlife.org. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise today. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I'm, I tell you, we're rejoicing and we're being glad in this day. Amen. Um, we, we thank God for each and every one of you that are here with us. And on behalf of Pastor Deborah Dukes, a woman of God, I tell you, and the Harvest Life family, thank God for each and every one of you. Thank you, Pastor Deborah, for that prayer. Man, I tell you. I, I know, I know we are church on fire, right? Early in the morning, just giving God praise like that and in the middle of the prayer, just pulling on the anointing of God. I just feel something, something moving, something is happening. Praise God. This is going to be 
your year. We, we, you may be seated a second. I just want uh, to make sure um, that um, you, you all are fasting and praying. You know, you, you know, if you're not on the consecration, please join in with us. And we're going through, uh, of course, the, the devotional, uh, just hot off the press, uh, a couple weeks old, On Fire for God, 21-day devotional. If you haven't picked up a copy, um, go through it each day. You want to pray, you know, read the devotional. You're fasting already. And so all these things make a difference. You want to see a great 2023 and beyond? It's, it's going to have to, uh, it's going to take something to get there. You're going to have to put some work in. And this is the spiritual work that you're going to be putting in uh, to see God uh, do some great things. do want to say this, uh, that we do need you to be praying since you're fasting and praying and we're fasting and praying as a church. We saw something incredible happen last year that as we started fasting and praying, I started believing God, you know, there's a shifting that happened with our new building. Uh, all these things started coming to pass. The county started helping us out and we got, you know, different people, architects and different things were inquiring. We need you to continue to do that, especially in this season. This is important that you fast and pray. So we're going we're gonna to ask that you, you would pray um, uh, again for uh, our financial institution to, 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 to step up and finance our project. So y'all want to write this down, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, we need you to, in your prayer time, I want you to pray for that. I want you to also pray, because uh, we're looking at a couple construction companies right now. And we want to need your prayers out there for uh, the right construction company uh, because, you know, these things are actually coming to pass. So there's a lot of things, the balls that are moving already. And there are some uh, construction companies that have been contacting us. And uh, in fact, this, this week or next week, uh, there's, a, there's a company coming in from, from out of state going to spend the whole day and look at the project and everything. So things are happening. And we want you to know uh, that this is, things are coming to pass, so we need you to be praying. So pray for the financial institution, pray for uh, the construction company, uh, pray for also uh, our, our, our dealings with the county for the, the permits and things that we need. So I need, I need those three things on your prayer list. Is that all right? Fasting and prayer makes a difference. You know, Jesus said there's some things that come only by fasting and prayer. And, and, I, and I say it, and, and I don't know if you, we're getting it, but I want you to know that there are certain things the Bible says. You know, certain things only come by fasting and prayer. There's a, there's a set of things that you can't get to unless you're fasting and praying. And then as we come together as a, as a church, uh, whenever two or three are gathered together, and when there's prayer going on, we're touching and agreeing, believing God, trusting God, agreeing together in prayer in the spirit realm, there's something incredible about that atmosphere. And so that's the reason why we should pray while we're in the midst of this January consecration. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, so we're, we, want, we want to be very strategic and we want to be very intentional about the things that we do this year because what we do here is going to make a difference. It's going to make a difference. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Grab your Bibles with us and turn your, your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter number 1. And one verse there, verse number five, and then also Joel chapter number two, uh, verse number 25. So we're just reading two verses, one out of Jeremiah and one out of uh, Joel. And we, we're going to uh, take a look at these scriptures uh, today. You can stand on your feet with us as we look at the word of the Lord. Just feel the presence of God today. Uh, we are a church on fire, church on fire. Uh, join me for Sunday evening live. We're, we we're going to be doing some special things this year. Um, um, but that's at 5 p.m. tonight. So, uh, amen, it's going to be a blessing. We want you to be there. Um, this is day eight, again, of, of, of our fast. And eight is the number of new beginnings. Amen. Praise God. And, and we're on fire for God for many reasons. And day eight in the book says, because we're going to heaven. Amen. And so, so no matter what happens here, amen, I, I'm not even worried about it. I got the confidence I need because I'm going to heaven anyhow. Yeah. Praise God. I'm standing on his principles here. I'm believing God. I'm going to be praying, amen, and fasting. I'm going to be walking in his ways, but I am on my way to a destination yeah. called heaven. Amen. Are you glad about it? Yeah. Amen. Jeremiah chapter number uh, one, look at verse number five. Uh, we find these words recorded. 
It says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. This is God talking. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Also out of Joel chapter uh, number 2 and uh, verse number 25, here's the Lord again. He says, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten and the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palm worm, my great army, which I sent among you. He says, I will restore to you the years. And out of Jeremiah, he says, before I form you, I knew you, I sanctified you, and I ordained you. Uh, I want to talk out of the message today, connect the dots. Uh, reach over to somebody and say, you've got to connect the dots. <laughs> Tell somebody else, you've got to connect the dots. Amen. Remain standing. Let me pray over you. Dear Lord, we thank you. We praise you. Give us insight and revelation from your word. Help us to walk and be victorious because of it. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Connect the dots. That, that, that's what we want to talk about today, connecting the dots. Many of you uh, are familiar with the phrase, connect the dots. Uh, some of us, we reference uh, our childhood years uh, of connecting the dots. You know, we had, back in the old days, paper pad games. Um, I didn't say smartphone games. I didn't say iPad games. We had paper pad games. Y'all remember them paper pad games? Uh, we had things like Hangman. It didn't cost a lot of money. Uh, your parents just gave you a pad of paper and, and gave you a pen or a couple pencils and said, y'all go play this. Uh, and, and we spent hours playing things like Hangman. Y'all, Hangman was, uh, you had to figure out a word uh, and, and if you missed it, there was, there'd be another, you know, another uh, spot on the gallow uh, that you would get. Uh, we, we did crossword puzzles. Y'all remember that? Uh, word find. Somebody said, well, what, how does that work? Well, you find the word, amen. <laughs> word find was a bunch of letters on a page and you had to figure out where the words were within the set of letters. Uh, we, we had all kinds of other games, tic-tac-toe. Anybody remember tic-tac-toe? Just, you draw some lines on the paper, and then uh, you can play that for hours. Uh, but, but also, uh, there were a couple games had the same name, Connect the Dots. Now, one of the, the, the Connect the Dot games was, uh, you put all these dots on a piece of paper, y'all remember that? And then you would connect the lines, and, and, and if you got a, a whole square, uh, you can put your initial in it. Or you can put your, 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 your first letter in it, and that would, you would win the game. Anybody remember that game? Connect the dot. You, and you go, you go y'all, some said, I don't even remember that one. Um, we'll show it to you at another time. <laughs> there, there, but there was another, another connect the dots uh, you find in coloring books, uh, and, and it would be numbers. And, and, you, and you would have to go from one to two, and then down to three, four, five, and, and it, it would, create a picture. Uh, you, you would look at it in the beginning, you wouldn't be able to see what the picture was, but then after a while, you get to about 26 and 27, you say, oh, that's a, that's a giraffe. You, you didn't know bef before, but you were connecting the dots. And, and that's where really the phrase kind of took off, connect the dots. It, it's talking about seeing the big picture, uh, understanding uh, the greater thing. Uh, it, when, we, when you begin to connect the dots, you begin to see, here it is, in the spirit realm, what God is doing. And God, uh, for us, God wants us, if we're going to be a church on fire, he needs us to connect the dots. He needs us to understand what we're doing. It's one thing to just do something, but it's another thing to understand why you're doing it. You know, we got these people that work uh, in Detroit in these, uh, these plants that are putting cars together and, and people, some, somebody doing, you know, the wheels, the, the steering a column, different things. They, it, and, and, of course, they do it because it's a assembly line. They're, they're paid to watch uh, the machines and or whatever and to do a, a certain thing, maybe just screwing a screw on. Uh, but, but the reality is it, it's there to develop a car. 
and somebody working with a seatbelt, you might be just kind of putting it together. But when you know that it may save a life one day, when you know it's a protective uh, piece of equipment that's going to help you uh, or help a family or do something bigger, it, it, it brings more fire and passion to your job. And, and so God is saying that when you start understanding what he has called you for, uh, it brings fire and passion. Uh, we're going to be a church on fire because we learn how to connect the dots. I love the text. The text is the reference point of God speaking to these great prophets and, and, and trying to give them some insight on the bigger picture. And, and, and here it is, Jeremiah was called as a young man, he's trying to preach and trying to do what God says, and he's mad, he's frustrated, people are not hearing him. Uh, he's called the crying prophet because uh, things are not going his way, and he, also, uh, he sheds some tears along the way, and, and then he's just about ready to quit. But here's what God told uh, Jeremiah. He says, but before I formed you, uh, in, your, in the belly, in your mother's womb, I knew you. That's what he was saying. He said, that before you even were, were a thought, you weren't even a thought, he said, I already knew you. I, I already knew. I, I love what he says. He says, he, he goes on and says, and I, I, I knew you, and before you came forth out of your mother's womb, I sanctified you, and or, I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. He had uh, ordination and consecration service before he was even born. So, so God has already done it. We did it at the Church United Convention. Some of y'all came. We prayed over you and had a court consecration and ordained many of you uh, to do particular things. And that's wonderful. But I want you to know that God has already done it. He's already done it. He already has your plan. He already has your, your purpose. He already knows what you're going to do. He has great things in store for you. And so uh, when you understand that, and we want you to get an understanding of that, it will cause passion on the inside. It will cause you to understand that God's got you and God is going to protect you and God is going to, to, to work with you and work through you uh, because you have an affinity and a heart to do his will. And, and this is where we've got to be. This is why it's important to get saved. This is why it's important to start walking in his way. Uh, you're going to have challenges and issues. The enemy is going to try to distract you. He's going to try to put everything in your pathway. He's going to try to detour you. He's going to try to, to, to get you to be crazy uh, and do something that you don't want to do. Uh, but the devil is a liar. you got to say in your spirit that, listen, I'm standing on God's principles and his promises, and no matter what the enemy throws in my way, no matter what happens in my life, I'm going to stand for God. And this is where you've got to be this year. And not just stand, I'm going to be on fire. I'm going to be trusting God. I'm going to be believing God. I'm going to be walking and, and praying. I, I love that we prayed just a few minutes ago, but how many believe that prayer really works? And when you put passion to prayer, when you put that fire in it like I saw this morning, you said, listen, I'm going to believe God. And some people came running at, at the altar, laying down at the altar, said, we got to get this thing done. I love that. I love You know why? Because I believe that when you have that kind of passion, uh, that moves God, that causes God to say, listen, they're not just going to stay in their seat. They're just not going to be ordinary. They're not going to let life pass them by, but they're going to take the mantle of, of change in their own hands. They're going to say, listen, we're going to get some glory. Uh, amen. We're going to get God's glory out of my life, and I'm going to stand upon his promises. These things will change. These things will come to pass. I understand this out of my control. I understand I'm dealing with an impossible situation, but how many believe that you serve a God that can do the impossible? And, and no matter, praise God, no matter what you face and no matter uh, your ingenuity and your innovativeness, we thank God for that because it got you this far. But where, where you got to go, you can't, it's not going to help you. You got to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. So what are you saying, Bishop? You got to connect the dots. You got to connect the dots because God, God has called you for such a time as this. God, God needs you. God is depending on you. And it's no time to sit back and, and, and to relax. It's no time to say, well, I, I'm tired. I just can't do it no more. I can't, can't do this. I, 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 can't, I arrived at 20, 23 empty. Hey, man, I'm on empty. I can't go any. Listen, you got to shake yourself. You know, shake yourself and get your act 
together. You got to get your mind together. Get your God, God knows you. He knows you got what it takes. He won't put more on you than you can bear. So if you got some stuff on you, you can bear it. You can, you can in fact, you can be victorious in it. You just got to have a mindset that no matter what I face, I'm, I'm connecting the dots that God has called me. That's what Jeremiah said. Okay, I understand this thing. This thing is like fire shut up in my bones. I got the word in me. I can't just sit down on God. I got to trust him. I got to believe him. He called me. He ordained me as a prophet. He's going to make something happen in my life. He just needs me to step out on faith. He just needs me to believe him. He just needs me to walk in his way. He just needs me to step out and believe him that he's able to bring it to pass. Anybody here love the Jesus? Anybody here love the Lord? Hallelujah. Come on, put a praise in the atmosphere. And he told Joel the same thing. He said, I'm going to restore the years. Amen. I, I know you lost some years. And I know you feel, you know, depressed or dismayed or you got some situations in your mind and, and sometimes things are not working out like you thought they would work out. And, and, and by this time, surely things should be better. But I'm here to tell you, you are right on schedule because God is working something in you. God needs all of this to make you who you are. If you didn't go through what you are going through right now, you wouldn't know how to pray like you pray. If you didn't have the experiences that you have in your life, you wouldn't have the depth of understanding and the depth of wisdom that you need to carry on with the assignment that God has called you for. Listen, he called Jeremiah for a great reason. He said, you're going to have to go through this. It's going to be some crying times. Why? Because I have called you as a prophet to the nation. And you just got to connect the dots. Listen, you're going through what you're going through because I'm calling you for a greater purpose for your life. I know you see things. I know you understand things. But listen, I've called you for stuff you can't see, stuff you don't know, stuff you can't ascertain. There is something so great that God has called you for, and you just got to shake yourself and get ready for it. Open your mouth and say, I'm getting ready for God. I'm, I'm getting ready for my assignment. I'm getting ready for my purpose. I'm going to see the will of God show up in my... Anybody know what I'm talking about today? And he will restore the years. Just connect the dots. I, I need you to connect the dots. He's going to restore it. Is he going to restore the years? Don't worry about it. You can pray about it, but don't worry about it. You can't pray and worry at the same time. You're either praying or you're worrying. And some of us, we do more worrying than we do praying. And we get up off our knees and after prayer and start worrying. And I'm here to tell you that's not a good combination. It says what things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. Does it say anything about worrying? It says step, step out and start walking like it's already done. Walk with the confidence like I am a prophet to the nations. I am believing God. What, what's, what's happening? God is restoring my years. How many believe that God is restoring your years right now? Listen, 2023 is going to be the start of God's restoration of the years that you lost, the things that you have you've cried over, things that you've lamented over. God says, I'm going to restore the years, but you got to trust me. That, and trusting him, I'm sorry, I just trust the Lord. I trust him. I really trust him. I believe, I believe, I believe. That's wonderful to do all that. But trusting has evidence. That means I'm going to get up and stop sinning. I'm going to get up and stop believing. I'm going to stop all this doubt and pity parties and all this kind of crazy stuff and getting all into other stuff and in other people's business and all that kind of stuff. You're all over the place. God says, bring it in. Just tell your neighbor, say, bring it in, bring it in. Bring it in. You got to bring it in because we're connecting the dots this morning. God has called you for such a time as this. Esther was all over the place herself. She was saying, I'm queen. I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I got my nice dresses. And, and God says, no, he sent, sent his, her, 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 uh, her uncle to, to, and, and asked her, her cousin and said, listen, uh, he said, uh, Mordecai said, listen, don't you know that you've been called for such a time as this? You, you got to do the necessary stuff. I know you're not going to like to go to see the king because you could be killed. There's, this is a dangerous job, but God called you for a dangerous job, a dangerous situation. But here it is, I got you. He said, when you go in, you're on God's time. 
You're, you're, you're doing the work of the Lord. When you step out with God, you're stepping out in him. And God says, in, Paul said, in him I live, in him I move, and in him I have my being. When you step out with God, God says, I got you. I'm covering you. I'm going to bless you. There's no weapon that's formed against you that shall prosper. If you step out on your own, you're going to have to deal with all that yourself. But if you're in God, he says, I will cover you. I will bless you. You're going to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field, blessed coming in and blessed coming out. He said, I'm going to make you head and not the tail, above and not beneath. You're going to be more than a conqueror. You're going to be a person that always will triumph because you serve the God that always causes you to triumph. And so you just got to start stepping out and believing God. But the step that you make is a righteous step. The step that you make is a very intentional step. It's not just doing anything. You just got to do the things that God has asked you to do. We're fasting and praying. Some of us say, I ain't going to do all that. Well, you're going to miss out because some doors are not going to open to you. But there will be some things that are going to happen in your life. For those of you that have made up your mind to come to Sunday school, to, to, I mean, and somebody said, that's, that's a little bit early in the morning. You made the sacrifice, but I'm, I guarantee you that God is downloading some things that you need uh, that will strengthen your spirit, that will equip you for what's up, what's coming up. Amen. That will give you a mind that, that, that when you would lose your mind, you got the mind of Christ. Praise God. God wants you to understand that this, all this is a, a part of a greater design. And so when you're going to start to be intentional, I'm, I'm going to be teaching next week Sunday school. I, 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 you're, going to need, you're going to need this. You're going to need this. I'm talking about the timeline of the Bible. And you're going to need a concept of, of what the dispensations are. And you're going to start to see that. That's going to resonate in your spirit. That, that you're going to say, well, wow, time is, I got to make sure I get my house in order. When you get, I'm, I'm, I wish I could talk about this. When you really get the word of God, it, it'll create passion in you. When you really get this understanding, you start connecting the dots, everything changes. Listen, I didn't get to my text, but give God some praise. How many believe that God is restoring the years? Praise God. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. This is not a text just for people that are getting saved. This is a text for people that have been saved for 20 years. Once I really get in Christ, praise God, he, he makes me a new creation. And old things start to, to, to dissipate, start to pass away. And these, a, a whole new set of things start rolling in from God. <laughs> because because I, I'm a new creation. If you seek first what? The kingdom of God. That's not just for people that just just coming to, to Christ. I want to seek God. This is for all of us. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what? What's going to happen? Connect the dots. I don't know why things are not happening. Things are not coming together. Connect the dots. Because are you seeking first the kingdom and his righteousness? And he said, if you do that, all the other things. The word is true. God is not a man that he should lie. The word is going to come to pass. And somebody's like, well, it's not coming to pass to me. Well, you're not, let's check out the word. Are you living in the word? Are you standing upon his promises? Are you living out the principles of the gospel? Are you believing and trusting God? Are you coming, have you separated yourself from sin? Have you fought temptations to the degree that you're successful? God gives you a way of escape. Are you taking the way of escape out of your temptation? God wants you to know that you are victorious but you're going to be victorious, connecting the dots, by way of standing firm in Christ Jesus. It's not going to happen any other way. It's not going to happen. People could pray for you, and, and those prayers happen because of, of you got praying people. But what you need to have a prayer life for you, all of your own. Praise God. Because I can't pray you into heaven. I mean, I, I, I got some, we got some great prayers. When Pastor Deb and I get together, we pray for y'all this morning. We pray for the families of Harvest and the people that come to the church. We, we prayed this morning. And we knew our prayers are going to make a difference. But, but God can't pray you into heaven. He can't pray things that you can only pray for in your life. There are certain things that you have to go to the Lord for. 
There are certain things and certain things that you must do so God can do what he wants to do. And you are primarily the only thing standing in the way of God moving everything in your house. He wants to do it. He wants to, he wants to, he's standing, he says, he, he says there's no good thing that I will withhold from them that are walking upright. In other words, for them that are not walking uprightly, this is talking about people that are in, in, in God. It, it's talking about there's some in God that are walking right, and there's some in God that are not walking right. And, and he's holding blessings. He's holding blessings like this, a whole bunch of blessings. And, and for those that are walking right, he says, nothing I will hold. Boom. But for those that he wants to bless, but he just can't bless because they haven't aligned themselves with the word, he said, I just got to hold it back. I want to bless them, but I can't bless them. God wants you to connect the dots today because every time you begin to see the bigger picture, you do better. Every time you begin to trust in the greater picture, uh, God says, uh, God wants you to know that there's going to be an energy of passion, a love for him that will change everything. Put a praise in the atmosphere today. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. I'm on fire. Anybody on fire for God? I'm on fire for God today. Uh, this is my year. I, I know. I, 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 I told y'all, I told y'all, you got a bishop and a pastor that's going to be on fire this year. The pastor they were praying this morning, man. I felt the fire of God. And we're going to be on fire for God. So uh, some of y'all say, well, he doing too much. Well, you get used to it. Because that's just how it won't be. I am a believer that when you really press in, you're going to see victory happen in your life. And I'm, we're going to lead by example, but we want everybody to take hold of this thing, connect the dots, understand that God is doing something great in your life. I'm going to preach the rest of this. Everybody stand, amen, in the 1130 service. I'm going to preach the rest of this later on, but I'm here to tell you, it's, this is your time. This is your opportunity. You